Hello, class. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the scaling principle for area. So in this first part, we're going to look at different polygons. We're going to figure out their area. Then we're going to multiply each dimension by a scale factor to so get a scale image. We're going to figure out the new dimensions based on our scale factor, the new area. We're going to compare the area of the similar figure to the original figure. So let's try the first part together, the first row, and then you'll try the other three on your own. So here we have a triangle, and we know the area is 1 half base times height. So we have 12 square units. So in this first box, we're going to fill in 12. Now it gives the scale factors 3. So if we multiply each dimension by 3, we end up with 24 and 9. So that's going to go in our next box over here. And so what is the area of our new figure? Well, it's going to be 1 half times 24 times 9, which is 108. And finally, we want to compare the, this area and the similar figure with the original area, which is 108 divided by 12, which gives us 9. So I'd like you to try the same with this triangle. Fill in your chart, and then I'll show you my solutions. So here is the area, 7.5, new dimensions are 10 and 6, and the new area is 30. And so that gives us a ratio of 4. Try the same for this parallelogram. So our answers are 20, the dimensions are 2.5 and 2, and the new area is 5. And our ratio is one fourth. And part D, try the same with this parallelogram. So our area is six. Our new dimensions are 4.5 and 3, and the new area is 13.5. And that gives us a ratio of nine fourths. So, what relationship do you see between the scale factors we have in this column? and the ratio of areas that we calculated in this final column. What relationship do you see there? Well, hopefully you noticed that all of these numbers are the square of the scale factor we used. And that's not a coincidence. So we want to show that this property works for any type of polygon. So even these strange polygons that we don't have a nice straightforward formula for. How could we show that our conjecture about r squared being that scale factor for the areas, how can we show that that's true for these two polygons? What would we have to calculate? We'd have to figure out their areas, right, and then divide them. And so how could we figure out the area of these types of polygons? We don't have a nice formula for that, but how can we combine simpler polygons to form these? What could we do? Well, we could break them up into triangles. And can we always do that for any type of polygon? Yeah, we learned that property in a previous lesson. You can always triangulate a polygon. So if we can show that this property holds for triangles, then it must hold for any polygon because we can always make a polygon out of triangles. So here's the scaling property for triangles. This just says that the when you compare the areas of similar triangles, the scale factor of the areas is r squared. So in order to prove this, we have to figure out what is the area of triangle S, what's the tri uh, area of triangle T. So this one has been, the dimensions have been multiplied by R. And then we want to compare them. So figure out each area, and then I'll show you my solutions. So for triangle S, that's just 1 half base times height. And for T, you end up with R times R, which is R squared. And so now what do we have to do to show that the ratio is r squared? We just divide them. And you see that we have the same expression here in the numerator and denominator. And it can't be 0, right? It's an area of a triangle. So we can divide them out, and we end up with r squared. So we prove this for triangles. So how can we use this property to uh, prove the scaling principle for any polygon? Like we said before, we can always divide a polygon into non-overlapping triangles. And we're just going to apply this property for triangles to our new polygon. 
So here's the scaling principle for polygons, very similar, but the word triangle has been replaced with polygons. So here we have subdivided each of these polygons into non-overlapping triangles, and each area is represented by a capital T with a subscript, so T1, T2, T3, etc. And over here, in the enlargement, we, we already proved that each area would therefore be r squared times the original area. So r squared t1, r squared t2, etc. So how can we represent the area of polygon p using this notation? Well, that would just be the sum of those five areas. And it's just saying that uh, t sub i is the area of the uh, ith triangle. So for example, if it's uh, t sub 5, that would be for the fifth triangle. That's all that notation means. So, like we said before, each area here is r squared times the original area. So, how can we write an expression for the area of polygon Q using this notation? Well, you add them all together, and we get this expression. Now, what do you notice here? What's in common in each term? We have an r squared in each term, so we can factor that out. And now we can substitute. We have this expression for the area of P and it's down here. So we can just plug in the area of P for this sum. And this shows us that the area of our similar polygon, the new one, is just R squared times the area of the original. And it could have been any type of polygon. We didn't have to just have five triangles. So this, this holds for any type of polygon. And as it turns out, this also holds for any type of figure. So the scaling principle for area also holds for figures such as ellipses and circles. So the only difference here is that we replace the word polygons with figures. So in exercise one, we have a rectangle, and they give us the area of triangle, or I'm sorry, rectangle A. And we want to figure out the area of rectangle B, and there's more than one way to do this, but I'd like us to apply our newfound principle. So in order to do this, we have to figure out what's the scale factor, and then we've got to figure out what's the scale factor squared, because if we multiply that by the area of the original, we can figure out the area of the new one. So what would the scale factor be? And remember, we want to figure out the area of the larger one, so we should get a scale factor that's larger than one. So our scale factor is 30 sixteenths, which simplifies our right, decimal 1.875. So the scale factor for the area would be that amount squared. So to figure out the area of the larger rectangle, we would multiply that by the area of A, which we know is 88. They gave that to us. And there's our answer. And we're talking about millimeters, so our answer should be millimeters squared, or square millimeters. Now another way you could have solved this is you could have divided 88 and 16 to figure out the other dimension and solved it that way. That's, that's fine. But that's not going to work in every example. So if we look at exercise two, they give us the area of the figures, but there's no way we could figure out what the other lengths are. It's not as simple as a rectangle. So why don't you try this example on your own, and then I'll show you my solution. Now be careful before you try it. Notice that we have centimeters here and millimeters, so you have to do some conversions. So try this, and I'll show you my solution. So I decided to convert from centimeters to millimeters. It's okay if you did it the other way. Your answer is going to have a different unit, so it might be uh, slightly different, but it's still numerically equivalent to my answer. So 2.4 centimeters is 24 millimeters. So our scale factor, I want to figure out the area of the smaller one. So we got to put the smaller dimension in the top of our fraction. So 15 over 24, which is 0.625. So the scale factor for the area is going to be that amount squared. So we multiply that by our area of 120 square millimeters, and we get 46.875 square millimeters. Now, if you had converted the millimeters to centimeters and did it that way, you'd have an equivalent answer, but uh, your number would be different, and your unit would be square centimeters. That's OK. And let's look at this example. So we're scaling this unit square horizontally, and then we're scaling this new rectangle vertically. What do you notice is going on here? Let's look at each part. What's the scale factor for the horizontal scale? And how do the areas compare? 
So the scale factor for the horizontal scale was three. Right? It went from one unit to three units. And the area, this one's three square units. This one's one square unit, so it was three times as large. Okay, that makes sense. It's a linear, uh, linear scale, right? But now the question is, what's happening from the second image to the third image? So I'll scroll up for a moment. So describe what's going on from this rectangle to this rectangle. So now we scaled it vertically by a factor of 5. And if we look at the area of the new figure, that's 15. And that's 5 times the previous area, which was 3. So of importance here is that the directions of the scaling are perpendicular to each other, right? The horizontal and the vertical are perpendicular or orthogonal. It's another word for saying that they're perpendicular. And with respect to the first square, the third image is fifth, has 15 times the area of the original. So how is that related to our two scale factors that we found? Our scale factors are 3 and 5, and 15 is the product of those two scale factors. So in general, if we scale by two different factors in perpendicular directions, we would just multiply those two scale factors together to figure out the scale factor for the area. So in the case of what we've been doing in the entire lesson, aside from this last example, it was just r and r in both directions, so it was r squared. But if they're two different numbers, then we would just do a times b, in the example here for this rectangle. And that makes sense, because we know area is length times width. All right, the same would be true if we had a triangle. Just multiply uh, the area by a, b. And this one might look familiar. Here we have a unit circle. And we know its area is uh, pi r squared, and r in this case is 1, so it's just pi. And for an ellipse, that's what we get if we use two different scale factors. Or, I mean, a circle is a type of ellipse, but in general, it's uh, not always a circle. We would get pi times a, b. So keep in mind that the scale factors could have been between 0 and 1, so we could have had a reduction, uh, just for these examples that we saw in large bits. So in this lesson, we learned about the scaling principle for area. Thank you for watching this video.